We're joined now by Rabbi Mark Schneider, the president at the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding in New York. Thank you very much for joining us. We just saw this sort of juxtaposition of statements. Martin Luther King with his statement, uh, previous generation, talking about the at least understanding that the black community had for Israel supporting its right to exist, and this sort of modern generation of radical progressive activists that seems to be frothing at the mouth for blood. Some of the citations, the numbers that we gave before about what many of these activists seem to, seem to believe, just how exactly did the black community get this position when it comes down to Israel and the Jews? As I point out in my book, Shared Dreams, Martin Luther King Jr. and the Jewish community, that Dr. King understood that a person who fights for their own rights are only as honorable as when they fight for the rights of all people. And why Dr. King was a tireless advocate in supporting the state of Israel and being at the forefront of the Soviet jury movement and his total disdain, his zero tolerance for anti-Semitism, particularly when towards the end of his life, in the more militant wing of the civil rights movement, those kinds of anti-Semitic attacks, rhetoric, and diatribe were coming to the fore. It's unfortunate, as we just observed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that many blacks of our generation are simply not familiar with Dr. King's being the champion and the civil rights leader, not only for blacks, but for Jews as well. I find it very interesting because you can draw a sort of ideological line from the past. Your statement about Dr. King's comments that as long as there's oppression somewhere, then nobody is safe from oppression, to the current ideas called intersectionalism, which takes that to an extreme that all oppressions anywhere are sort of the same oppression, but it allows the same communities that should be against anti Semitism to instead endorse it because they can present Israel or Jews as a colonizing force. How do you extricate the idea of civil rights from this more parasitic and dangerous idea that's latched onto it. You're spot on, and that's the challenge that we now face. And that's the challenge that Dr. King faced um, in 1965, 66, 67, uh, before his tragic death and, and assassination, 1968. The message is clear, there is no segment of American society that provided as much and as consistent support to Dr. King and to the black community during the civil rights era, as did the Jewish community. We must challenge civil rights activists today, particularly within the black community. We must remind them that the civil rights of Jews, whether it's the optic and the exponential growth in anti-Semitism or the uh, anti-Israel attacks, um, the rhetoric, the diatribe that we're experiencing when it comes to Israel here in the United States, well, the civil rights of Jews today is at stake as well. And we were there for the black community that led to their tremendous, tremendous uh, growth in terms of the achievements of the civil rights community. We need their support today as well. Rabbi Schneider, have Jewish, particularly Jewish progressive groups, really just dropped the ball on this front? They have. There was that very loud endorsement of Black Lives Matter by the ADL before you saw it flagrantly turn into the organization that it is today. But we've seen Jewish progressive groups support the black identitarian movements across the United States for a very long time, maybe for the very reasons you were talking before about Martin Luther King's statements, uh, using them in a sense to oppose the very real threat of white supremacy, but ignore the growing anti-Semitism coming from the left. Is there some culpability by the progressive groups for allowing that to fester? There's no question, and not only when it comes to the black community, but when it comes to so many other alliances, um, these progressive movements have had a rude awakening. And since October 7th, 
uh, there has been a re-examination and a re-evaluation of some of these uh, ethnic alliances uh, that progressive Jewish groups have had here in this country. When we look at the various views and ideals held by the younger generation, it seems to only be drawing to a more and more extreme conclusion the younger they get. Is it too late to change the public perception? Are these sort of radical ethnic views so entrenched in society that there may not be an easy solution or a solution at all? It's not too late because I make a distinction between black leaders and black civil rights activists. And if you look at the black leadership in the US, you know, from Kamala Harris to Hakeem Jeffries, um, the Democrat leader in the House to uh, the mayor of the city of New York, Eric Adams, um, they have been extraordinary in demonstrating uh, their support and solidarity with the state of Israel, particularly at this time. Uh, but this is not our battle. We need uh, allies in the black community uh, to join us, not only in supporting of Israel, but to educating and sensitizing the young people within their own community as well. Is there a good roadmap for actually doing that? When, if we look at the influencers in the younger generation, it's not the establishment of the party, but it's figures like Ta-Nehisi Coast, it's figures like Candace Owen, it's figures like Kanye West. How do you reach out to a younger generation when they're listening to those voices rather than older and wiser ones? I uh, respectfully disagree. Um, we're dealing with younger members of the community, young people are easily influenced, uh, but they do look to um, influencers, they do look to leaders, and I think that they can't, they can't be influenced. Uh, where the American Jewish community uh, needs to step in is that we need to reach out uh, to these black influencers, to these black leaders to say, not only do we need to hear your voice of solidarity uh, for the Jewish community or within the Jewish community, we also need to hear that voice disseminating throughout um, the black community as well. And I guess my closing thoughts and maybe your closing thoughts on this is how would you actually perform that action? How do you reach out to them? How do you get them to agree? I think the way to do it is just to uh, remind them to share you know, with the younger members of their community and to, to give these young members a historical reference. I mean, how can you commemorate across this country Dr. Martin Luther King Day um, within all denominations, within all religions, um, and not address uh, his profound support for the Jewish community and when it came to anti-Semitism, I mean, Martin Luther King Jr. was colorblind. He had zero tolerance, he had total disdain, and he was not afraid to call out members of his own community. We have that historical reference, and as part of the historical reference, members of the black community, particularly younger members, need to be reminded that it was the Jewish community that played a singular role and made a singular contribution uh, to the success of the black civil rights movement. Well, thank you very much, Rabbi Schneider, for your thoughts on that topic.